Hey guys, Buckskin Dave here. Welcome to another episode. Uh, last time we were talking about <clears throat> some old, older traps and um, I went out and put some traps out and did a little spring beaver trapping. I'm going to let you in on some of that footage here in just a minute. One of the other things we'll be working on in the shop is I've decided to rust brown this, uh, our big 50. And so I'm going to, this way it's shooting good, so there's no sense while it's, there's no sense shooting it anymore until I put a finish on it because I'm going to have to take the sights off and stuff. So just stick around. That's what we're going to work on the next couple of episodes. We'll get that thing ready to go. Uh, spring bear season opens tomorrow. I'm not ready, but I do have some beaver carcasses. <laughs> Anyhow. Grab a cup of coffee, stick with me, and uh, let's run out on the beaver line for a few minutes, and then we'll come back and break this thing down. Kind of from last fall, and uh, I've got some traps up here I haven't checked yet, but I always come by this spot because I always thought this would be a good rear leg, good place for a rear leg catch, and there is beaver poop in the water here, which wasn't here the last been coming in and out of here quite a bit uh, for the last week and a half and it wasn't here so we're gonna get that set made in here um, with a number five and we're gonna drown him out there so it's not quite as fresh as I'd like to see it um, but just up the way there was some sticks that weren't there and this is a spot that just uh, I just showed you that had the um, the droppings in there the scat in there so apparently either up stream a ways he pooped and came down here and just upstream a ways there is some fresher sign and then these sticks that I found here just oh, about 10 feet up the road here um, up the creek uh, those those weren't there before so he's working in here so I got my caster mound right there I put a little bit of those sticks there for some eye appeal my trap is probably well, at least 12 inches. The pan's at least 12 inches below those sticks in the bait. So, should get a rear foot catch. And I got him wired out into deep water. So, anyway, this is a pen set I have here with a number four for a front leg catch. And, uh, problem has been since I set these traps, it's been like 10 degrees and 5 degrees and just way too cold out here. And it's icing over the trap. And um, the only reason I'm leaving this one in here is it might warm up enough. Or, and I have another trap down, down the way here a little ways that is in a canal. So. so there's one of the challenges of spring trapping. You know, we had all this beautiful weather. It's April, what, 11th or so. And uh, we had all this beautiful weather. And the minute I start putting traps in... From the looks of that, that, I'll bet that ice is an inch and a half, two inches deep. So anyway, I had a conibear set where this, these beaver were going over the dam. And uh, we did score one. So let me get them out of there and I'll give you a good shot of them. So it's not a bad, not a bad beaver. Oh, there's one more. That was a long hundred yards I had to drag this guy. Man, these beaver, they are, they're beautiful. I mean, they are in their primest. And uh, there's some pretty good sized ones in here. This is a pretty good beaver. Well, looks like we'll be skinning this afternoon. Anyway, that's not a bad beaver. It's uh, he probably pays, weighs about 55 pounds, maybe 60. Uh, that trap is oh, about 19, 20 inches across. So. A lot of guys don't like putting these up on metal stretchers. Um, I've used them for what I'm going to do with these. Uh, this is just a, this is a beautiful uh, spring beaver. 
felt. And uh, you can tell, I mean, underneath, it still has a red tinge to it, but you can tell the leather is nice and clean. Clean and creamy white. I uh, didn't sew up the leg holes because I'm going to hoop these beaver on a... Uh, I cut some willows while I was out there trapping. I'm going to hoop these up for wall hangings and uh, on willows with sinew. So I can sew them up when they come back from the tannery. But uh, I got another one that's probably two inches around. It'll probably stretch out two inches around bigger. So I just haven't fleshed it yet. Oh, it was worth the trip. Plus I got about, oh, out of these a couple of beaver, I probably got a half a pound of caster, which is, I'll probably use it in my own lures, um, but it's worth about $80, $90 a pound these days, the caster is. And I got a couple of tails. I'm going to make some knife sheaths out of these tails. I got two tails that are up here. I'll let you take a look at them. I don't have enough time to work with them today, but uh, I'm going to skin these out and uh, should be able to get two knife sheaths out of each one. We'll see how it turns out. It's another thing I've never done before, so we're going to do it together. Not so bad. Um, th those beaver, I'll tell you, this time of the year, <clears throat> like I say, there's only a couple days left. Um, you know, tomorrow's the end of the season, but... Um, this was a place where there was a little bit of a problem with the rancher and so and he's a friend of mine so I went in there and and uh, took a few out and I, I didn't take them all um, he likes them to hold the water back but when they start going out into his ditches that's that's not making it so um, so it was kind of a win-win deal um, I hope you enjoyed that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start polishing this <clears throat> and uh, get the deal going, get the furnace going, and we'll put it in the furnace and get it hot, and we'll throw some of that um, rust brown on it. And uh, we'll put it back together and do some shooting. So, stand by. So, some of these marks, I gotta take credit for some of them myself, but there's one machining mark right here where the machine gouged in just a little more than I am willing to let slide. So we're going to work that off with this file and, uh, and we'll sand it down with some sandpaper. All right, it's right on the side of the barrel, so. All right, I'm going to work it down a little more. I've got the other parts in the oven. As soon as I get done filing this down, it'll go into the oven. Anyway, I got that. I got my maker's mark on there. I got all the machine marks filed out. It's in the cooker now. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish browning that. Um, I don't know. Probably take three, four coats of brown. In the meantime, I'll probably clean this stock up a little more. I kind of only partially finished this rifle because I wanted to shoot it for a while and see how it was going to shoot. And Now that I got her going, I'm going to go ahead and finish it out. <clears throat> and uh, I got a, uh, I got to get this thing finished out because I have a fella. Um, I'm going to get a bunch of parts from uh, the rifle shop. And a guy wants me to put this uh, rifle together for him. I've never used the rifle shop, and I'm going to be building what was called a Baker Baker rifle. All I know about it as this, as of now, because I'm going to do some research to see how they were built and everything, is it's a British military rifle, 62 caliber, I believe, with a rifled bore and a flintlock. It's about an 1800s period um, military British rifle. So we're going to be building that. I believe it's going to have a walnut stock. I've never built one, so i got to do some research so I can build it the period as best I can. And 
I want to get some of these other projects out of the shop so I can get right to it. I've probably got about another uh, four or five weeks before the parts get here. And uh, from what I understand, it's going to be a fun rifle to build. Uh, all the parts are just cast, so we're going to get the shape them and finish them and and all that type of stuff, so it's going to be kind of fun. You guys be welcome to join me and drink all kinds of coffee with it. So, anyway, I'll have this thing finished for you for next time. That's all I got this time. You guys have a great day. Thanks for dropping in, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.